Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today at Playhouse Square, and we're talking today with Eric Koble, playwright. Thanks, Eric, yeah. for taking time. That's a pleasure. Glad to be here. Hey, congratulations, first of all. Thanks. Over your shoulder right there at the Allen Theater Cleveland yes. Playhouse, a carol for okay. Cleveland. Yep, yep. How is it so far? So far, it's been great. It's been uh, we've been previewing. Uh, audiences seem to be responding. It's been a really good. Uh, uh, I, I think we've managed to hit the Cleveland vibe we were aiming for. People say that's one word I keep hearing is authentic. So uh, that that warms my heart. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Well, you this you you didn't write this. You actually adapted it, right? From right. Les Roberts. Exactly. Novel. Les gets the credit. He planted all the seeds. It was his story. He was asked to write a Christmas story when he first moved to Cleveland in uh, '90, I think it was, and. Uh, and he, he had to promise not to have anyone die in it or be murdered or anything, <laughs> unlike usual Les Roberts stories. So uh, he did that. He achieved that and wrote, wrote up a, a very nice Christmas story that's very about Cleveland. A lot of it takes place in Public Square, and it's about the soul of Cleveland. And then I got to adapt it for the stage, yeah. So was that intimidating, working with someone like Les Roberts, who's had like 600 books right, out? Right, exactly, been... exactly. Has been worked in Hollywood, worked every, in every yeah. other field except theater, uh, really. Um, no, it really wasn't. He was super supportive all along yeah. the way. I, I gave him a treatment early on and said, this is what I'm going to do with it. Here's my version of how to turn it to the stage. He gave his blessing on that, and then he gave me what I would consider is the best gift you can give a writer, which is freedom. And he just said, you know, go to, and uh, I'd like to see a draft when you're done. And so I just got to write it. Uh, with the goal of keeping in the right spirit, right? I mean, I, I, had to, I had to stay true to the spirit of the story, if not every fact of it, because it's a, it's a short story. It's 32 pages long. So if we just did it literally, as Les says, we'd be out in about 25 minutes of the theater. <laughs> so we wanted to expand it to 90 minutes, and uh, so I expanded it and, and took it in some different directions while trying to stay true to it. Then he read the first draft, and he said, this is brilliant, so I'm good to go, and he's been super supportive. So he didn't want to make any changes, No changes, no, he let no. you just do your thing. He let me do my thing. He's seen <laughs> right. a few performances of it now, and he's a big fan. He says, he's, right. he, if it's possible, he would be here every night. So. Wow. Yeah. Now, you've been in Cleveland now, we were just saying, almost 20 years, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we it's think about of my, a couple of decades. I know. I, as I say, I'm, I'm a, a local without being a native at this point. You are actually yeah. born where? Edinburgh, Scotland? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was born in Scotland, grew up out in New Mexico, Colorado and then uh, and came here uh, to work at the Cleveland Playhouse, actually. That right. was what brought me here, was the Playhouse, right. to do an internship. And you were actually, uh, did you take, was it a BFA at, at Ohio University? Uh, MFA, MFA, yeah. MFA mm -hmm. in, in, in acting. acting. Right. And then I kind of fell over into playwriting along the way. Gotcha. Yeah. Talk about when you were out west, because it sounds like that's when you really got started with your writing, when you were sort of making up stories True, yeah. and plays. Is that, what right. was happening when you were a kid? You were, what, on an Indian reservation? Yeah, yeah, I was on the Navajo reservation. My mom was teaching, and uh, I, so I was just there. Um, yeah, I didn't, I mean, I certainly wasn't thinking about it at the time. Certainly was not making career plans, but there was a, uh, a factor of, um, there, there was extreme poverty, I will say that. Everyone was, uh, there was one family who had a TV set, and that was the, that was the popular family, and wow. uh, so it really, it did force us to make up our own games. We really did not have a lot of what a lot of people would think of as, as uh, amenities. So we would go outside, you know, after school every day, we'd be out there in the desert with our sticks and rocks and running around avoiding rattlesnakes and... Uh, uh, literally, people think I'm making that up, but that's all true, and avoiding cacti, cacti and, uh, and making up stories. We would just come up with whole long, very intricate scenarios involving like which sticks were friends with which, and whole tribes against tribes, and it was very uh, like Lord of the Rings with sticks and rocks, basically. And uh, So that was, that was really the start. And, I, we, and then we'd sometimes write that down. We would draw pictures to go with stuff. Once it got too cold, we'd go inside and things. So that was, again, no career plans in that, but I think that got my imagination started with the fun of making stuff up. You're still doing basically the same thing, are you not? I never grew I mean, up. That's right. How many how many plays have you written now? You, you're so prolific. I am prolific. Well, I guess that's a word for it. Uh, I, I, it keeps me off the streets. I well, have, let me uh, just list a few here. You've sure. You've got Vote is on an East Coast tour. Yes. Side Effects May Include is on a Midwest tour. The yep. Giver is in Denver right now. Graphic Depictions is uh, in Boise. Mm -hmm. Gathering Blue is in Oregon and Milwaukee. Yeah, those are just the ones that are up within. The those are the big. Those are those are the the, the big ones. Yeah, there's a yeah. whole bunch of uh, school and college productions and things. Yeah, it. Uh, I, I tend to try to write a few scripts a year. Um, it, as I say, it lets me. It takes me a while to gestate ideas. I when I get the idea, it takes it usually a couple of anywhere from a few weeks if I'm really fast. Usually a few months, sometimes a couple of years before I start writing, putting pen to paper. And then, um, then it happens pretty fast. And so I'm always, in some way, working on about 12 scripts at a time. Whoa. Yeah. And at various stages of, like, this counts as one, Carol sure, for Cleveland, sure. which is right on the verge of being born. Right. And then there's uh, uh, three new plays that are in my head that in January I know I'm going to start on at least one of them. So wow. it's, it's all the runs a gamut. So you're still like that kid in the desert 
keeping Damn straight. all this straight in your That's head. That's right, yes. And yes. congratulations, because you've got yes. a play opening in on Broadway. This hopefully. is huge, right? Yeah, yeah, hopefully so. Velocity of Autumn, which ran at the Beck Center just a few months, just a few ago, months here, ago with right? Dorothy Silver and uh, David Hansen. Right. And... Uh, how and in theory, it's this? moving. I mean, uh, it would be April. It would be opening in April in New York if it, if all comes to pass. They're still raising money and things like that. You know, right. a lot of things can happen. But uh, it, the the, the creative team is, is together. Board. Estelle Parsons and yeah. uh, Steven Spinella. She uh, he won a couple of Tonys for Angels in America and some other shows, and yeah. she's won the Academy, Academy Award. Awards. So it's all the. We got big names involved anyway, so we're that hopeful. Helps. That's helpful. It does. It does. People are, tend to write checks when there's big names involved. And yes. that's what it takes, right? Yeah, exactly. These are expensive productions. Yeah, that's right. How how different is this for you to have something go that far, and uh, or is it just like uh, something that Obama or? Yeah, it's well. In Clean some ways, it theater. is. I mean, the part, my role in it is just the same. I'm the writer. Yeah. I, my job is the words and the intentions behind the words, and that's really all I can do. And it, it's. It's a little more I struggle to keep that in mind when the stakes get raised like this, but yeah. it's not. Um, ultimately, I can't do any more than just try to make the script as good as I can, and hopefully that it will. Uh, you know, ultimately, I want it to have the same effect whether it's running at Dubama or Ensemble or Beck uh, or on Broadway. I mean, I, I want to. I want the audience to respond. I want to give the best performance possible. I want to make some you know good art and. Uh, so I do my part on that. Then beyond that, everything else is ratcheted up to a huge degree, and I just kind of try to step back and not get too sucked in, I think. So the response so far, Carol, for Cleveland has been great. It's been very good, yeah. Previous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are, people are a lot of, lot of uh, misty eyes, a lot of laughter, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people recognize a lot of Cleveland in it. And uh, as I say, I think, I think we've hit what we were trying to hit, that kind of that soul of Cleveland, right. making Cleveland a character as well as, as a background. Um, I think we're hitting there, yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank it's you. It's great to talk with you. Thanks for taking it's a time. It's pleasure. Thank Good you. Good luck with this. Good luck on Broadway, and we'll Thank continue you. to stay in touch. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.